Hello friends, it's 4 o'clock. Um, good afternoon. I know I need to get a better setup, better camera. Um, this is what I got and this is today's video. The world will become better, will start finally changing in its essence as far as society and society's problems when we honor and apply human nature, what we understand about human nature and start applying it to the transformation of our society, not what we believe about human nature which was created by old ideas and prejudices, many of which are rooted in religion. Uh, I'm not knocking religion because there is a place, a necessity for religion, not, not one that we have ever created so far, but um, I'm saying we build on what we have assumed uh, along many generations is the case with human nature, and we're actually wrong in a great deal of it, a great um, amount of it is just wrong assumptions about ourselves. So in any case, what this video is about <coughs> is the power of weapons. Let me let me um, give you an example. Let me get, present to you a situation. If you have to befriend and trust or like someone, are you going to be more inclined to trust, to think positively, uh, to want to be friends with the person bearing a gun in their holster, or somebody that is not bearing a gun and has no weapons on them. This is not a matter of logic. It is simple human nature and we're right to do so in trusting the person that is not carrying a weapon. The reason is because we have evolved, we are made to exist socially and collectively based on knowing one another as the same species, as another individual just like us. The collective gels and stays together as a prime directive, quote unquote, to quote Captain Picard, um, because that's how nature made us. Luckily, <laughs> imagine if, if nature had thrown a fastball on us and said, well, I want to make a, a living being, a living form, but I'm going to make it attack itself. No, <laughs> nature creates collectives, uh, living forms, whether we're conscious or we're trees, uh, or we're highly intelligent like human beings compared to animals, we are still uh, always going to have as a pr first force, uh, primal force, the uh, recognition of ourselves as a collective, and therefore our first uh, inclination our first um, um, tendency is to want to trust because trust creates what everything makes trust makes possible everything that we can do as a collective living living form it, it makes the collective work sort of say function and be able to do what it's meant to do by evolution and creation. Um, that said, I had a thought while I was just having lunch and I, I, I rushed to do this and I, I know it's going to be quick uh, this time. For the first time I'm going to make a real quick one. Um, the arms race didn't start with Russia and America. The arms race started since we invented weapons. We haven't stopped uh, in this arms race to outdo the other as a uh, human civilization. And the reason is that um, bearing weapons fosters uh, mistrust. Mistrust isn't the word I had thought of first. Insecurity, suspicion, fear, fear, that's what it was. Bearing weapons fosters fear, 
And if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. You're fine in the world, and all of a sudden you're the only one in town carrying a gun. <laughs> Naturally, you're going to be a little paranoid about that. Now, this is not something that we have applied as wisdom in the making of our uh, social institutions uh, to run the country, obviously. And yet we have evidence to see that in fact this is true. Um, and this all comes because of this uh, article I read on, on Facebook, which is America is sending um, an uh, uh, aircraft carrier uh, to, I, I haven't read the article actually, I just saw the titles, the title and read some of the comments, but um, yeah, I think it's just probably one of the typical visit, you know, all the ports around Argentina and probably Uruguay. Uh, and the leftist party was like in outrage, you know, the Yankees are again, you know, beating their, their, their chest around our shores and blah, blah, blah. And so I was commenting, and then I started thinking, you know, what the hey, uh, Amer Latin America, it, you know, barely has a few bullets uh, <laughs> stored in its basement. They don't have really any army worth uh, America worrying over. Why are they needing to display their presence uh, in front of Argentina, which is overloaded with problems of every other nature but military? Um, and then, of course, you think of what happened in Bolivia, what's happening in Chile, Venezuela, and Argentina recently elected a centrist left government, which traditionally has, you know, they're the ones that kicked uh, the English private owned companies in the 50s, the Peronists, uh, to nationalize and, and, and foster their own industry, the growth of their own industry, rather than be owned by the British. And so, the, the Peronists are labeled as an anti-capitalist, anti-American, anti-British kind of... Now it's fused and diffused into other things, but basically as soon as Fernandez took power, uh, the first thing he did, he make, I don't know if he, he was trying to make a statement or he thought he could start in that direction, but you know, he uh, helped Evo Morales escape Bolivia and he was against the, the coup uh, right-wing overthrow, corrupt, supported by the United States, and he joined with Mexico in, in, this, um, in this declaration, and they gave Morales exile in Mexico. And then um, Lula was freed, uh, thanks to the intercept, and um, Chile revolts uh, against everything that the United States and the Chicago boys, or British capitalism, whatever, you, however you want to call it, uh, was created during the Pinochet era uh, and the killing of Allende. And um, so now they're all kind of like uh, bubbling up that whole era once again and you know, like rehashing uh, their discontent since then that has been smoldering since then uh, underneath this right-wingish pro-capitalism government that has been governing them. And La Cachupo, which is the new Uruguayan president, uh, just said, you know, yeah, I agree. I don't like uh, Mora, uh, Maduro, uh, but I'm not going to go with the corrupt uh, BS storyline of Guaido being a legitimate representation, representer of Venezuela. He's not. It's all corrupt, it's all bogus, and I'm not going to go with that. And so, all of a sudden, the United States is sending its aircraft carrier down between Uruguay and Argentina, right? Uh, so I'm thinking, you know, so they're trying to, the United States is trying to put one hand on that, and at the same time, it's got another hand on Iran, and at the same time, it's got a hand on Russia, and at the same time, it's like concerned... Uh, with uh, 10 hotspots that would say, I'm not so sure I'm your friend, and others are saying it uh, a little bit louder, some are saying, you're my enemy. <laughs> so understandably, if somebody's saying, we're your enemy, we would destroy you if we could. You know, let's say North Korea, okay, the bad guy. Um, 
certainly Latin America is not saying that. If anything, Maduro is just raw, you know, beating his chest and saying all that stuff, but he could never do anything to the United States. So why is the United States like trying to uh, influence and install? There's a possibly, in, in my humble estimation, a preoccupation that the uh, geopolitical forces are moving and are, are start with a generalized, very subtle, non-aligned or anti-American sentiment throughout the world. And they're like all of a sudden worrying, you know, they, they're trying to put out all these fires. And, um, and they're afraid, meaning that they're afraid Russia and China, which already have, especially China, starting to move in first economically. And we know the United States dominates in England the banks and the financial industrial world through money. And so China moving in economically is like their big worry. And it's, they're also worried about the the new Silk Road that they're building and the, their economic power and they want to, they would like to see Hong Kong become a, a real, you know, a, a cancer problem for China, I'm sure. At the same time, they're trying to, in any case, this situation of uh, worrying, would it not have been caused by having become such a, a, a militant bully after the Second World War and saying we're going to lead the world first it's easy when you have ten guns and people have slingshots to say we are great we will bring democracy and thriving capitalism to the world um, and it not appear like you're forcing it even though you are forcing it like we did in Vietnam and Korea Guatemala and a bunch of other places back then, but um, it's still the idea of a, a, a democracy and freedom champ prevails and prevailed culturally over the world until the, um, the events of much more aggressive Iraq, Iran, war in Afghanistan, Africa, South Sudan, and everywhere else and then everybody started talking you know pr communications became more proliferous and the media technology exploded onto the scene and everybody knows what uh, what uh, US the United States did in Latin America through intervention and military alliances with military occupations and and so all of a sudden the popular um, opinion, international opinion about the United States is starting to go the other way very slowly and even in America uh, we are starting to for the first time have courage in saying bad America, bad America, you would have never heard in the 80s uh, all the independent journalists that are criticizing American interventionism and da 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 and the evil of capitalism, never, and now all of a sudden we ourselves are, so this this is expanding, and what I feel is that as a not what I feel, but one theory would be that as a direct result of this expansion of um, sort of negative sentiments in the, uh, the world over, is causing America to be more defensive and more uh, intent on putting out these fires. And then I'm thinking of an over militarized practically because the military have been stalking the, the police in the United States and so you see all these police act so brutally like tase women and tase elderly ladies and looking for ways to to have more power and they walk around like robocops like needing to uh, and you go, these are all people that are walking around citizens they're walking around without guns do we really need a police that looks like you know, like some space age uh, invader coming into a neighborhood and having to protect itself from from anything that could happen to their their um, their hostility, uh, their hostile demeanor. Well, what is this hostile demeanor about? America has the highest thing. You know, I could expand on this, but I don't want to overkill the point about only the police. But what I'm saying is, has the highest population of uh, imprisoned. Uh, citizens in the world, uh, the country that was leading human values and democracy and all these beautiful, billowy, 
uh, sort of propositions to the world ends up being, ironically, the country that most punishes and obligates, because what is incarceration? Obligate against a problem, obligate against a, situ a social situation, nonetheless a problem, but it is still enforcing. Where did that problem come from? So it's, you know, in other words, all that it's proposed, it is about, is resulting first in a society that is just bonkers, that drugs itself, that doesn't want to go to school, that just wants to be me, me, look at how wonderful I am, and look at how different I can be, and or they, they, uh, you know, like kill, like kids running around a, a Walmart that all of a sudden all the owners <laughs> are no longer there, and of course, again, again, half the population is being pseudo criminal trying to do, do things that the law, you know, it's all about transgressing and nobody has respect for government anymore. Look at how, as soon as we had a, a, a character like Donald Trump come to power, there was not a sense of. Wait a second, this is the president. No, the, the media, all of the Hollywood started calling him the worst things. Uh, and nobody felt, wow, I'm insulting my own country. I'm, I'm really, you know, some people did. And What I'm getting at is that America also, whether we're talking about its uh, attitude towards its own people, Fear and the police, fear and uh, protecting and lying about things and covering up and then, and then weirdly sadistically mistreating inmates when when all the cameras are are turned off and all these weird things uh, which describe excessive hostility and fear because it all comes from fear provokes the lashing out of meanness when you're safe from that fear. So if if you have a gun and you walk around paranoid, when you get home, that paranoia, that fear from uh, that you for bearing the weapon will be lashed out against the people that can't fear you, the people that love you and trust you. And this is what's happening with the police in America. And this is, you can also see how it's becoming, um, they're trying to, we're almost becoming paranoid about every, anybody that says anything, uh, and at the United Nations, against the United Nations or against the United States, we immediately go and kill them. Um, so what I'm saying is that social, civil and international military situations are confirming my belief that weapons, having, bearing a weapon, causes inescapably fear in the human nature. So guns are bad for us. <laughs> We've been saying this for a long time. People have been saying they're, they, they make design, they make guns to kill people. They don't make them to, uh, you know, carve a turkey. They make them to kill people. Uh, but nobody gets it. And when you think about it, um, at the larger scale, not just in this sense that I just these things that I just described, but also in world history, it seems that humanity's problem really is not having concluded that uh, underst through understanding its nature, coming to terms with its own nature, that bearing weapons goes against our human potential for the creation of a wonderful civilization possible by, by our intelligence. We are not allowing ourselves to be our maximum potential and, and design and create the beautiful world we could, we are capable of making for ourselves out of this planet, in this planet, out of the world. Uh, because guns is like the, it's like the, the ugly, you know, the ugly, the ugly monster in the room that doesn't let anybody at ease and we can't expand onto harmon harmonious, collective, creative, um, congenial uh, commu transference of information and communication. In other words, it's, it's, like, a, it's like something that hurts you, that's uh, stuck inside your shoe and you can't walk right because it's there. Guns and weapons are actually keeping us from becoming the humanity and the world that we could become. Okay.
that's what I wanted to say. Have a good day. Ciao. Thank you.